They don't talk about anything that's actually relevant to people. They lie to people. They gaslight people, just like I said a minute ago. When they say, you know, inflation is not real or we're, the economy's doing great and people can't pay their that pisses people off, bro, because they know better. And then, you know, people are starting to talk again, right? Right, right, Like, right. after the pandemic, people were a little less social and they didn't communicate. And so this gaslighting worked a little better then because people weren't talking. They were thinking, well, man, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that's hurting. Maybe. But now they're talking to their friends. They're talking to their neighbors. They understand that times are a lot tougher than what they were in the past. And it's not just them. So every time KGP gets up there and says this stupid uh, lies to people every time Biden goes up there and lies about the economy and then blames it on Trump and all this like bro it's lifting the veil more and more to show who these people really are what is up guys it's Andy Frisella and this is the show for the realists say goodbye to the lies the fakeness and delusions of modern society and welcome to motherfucking reality guys today we have Andy and DJ Cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for, for those of you that are a little slower than the rest of us. Uh, we put topics on the screen. We speculate on what's true and what's not true. And then uh, we talk about how we, the people, have to solve the problems going on in the world. Now, this is not our only format of show. We have a plethora of formats. We have, at other times when you tune in, we're going to have Q&AF. That's where you submit questions and we give you the answers. Now, you can submit your questions a couple different ways. The first way is... Guys, you can email those questions into askandy at andyforsella.com. Or you go on YouTube on the Q&AF episodes and you drop your question right there in the comment section and we'll pick some from there as well. Other times, we're going to have real talk. Real talk is just 5 to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. Uh, then we have... Occasionally, we have 75 hard verses. 75 hard verses is where uh, someone comes in who has... Completed the 75 hard program, which is the initial phase of the live hard program, um, which you can get for free at episode 208 on the audio feed only. It's not on YouTube. Um, they come in, they talk about how their life was before, how their life is now, and how you can use the live hard lifestyle, the 75 hard program to transform your life as well. If you're unfamiliar with the program, it is the world's most popular mental transformation program. Uh, and you can get it for free at episode 208 on the audio feed. There is a book called the book on mental toughness which gives you all the nuts and bolts of the Live Hard program from start to finish, plus 10 extra chapters on mental toughness, why it's important, how you can develop it, how you can use it in your life, and then some case studies of some very famous people who have used it to accomplish the things that have made them famous. So uh, go check that out, andyforsella.com, the book on mental toughness. And uh, we have this thing on the show. It's called The Fee. We say, hey, pay the fee. That doesn't mean give me money. Uh, you'll notice that we don't do ads on the show. I don't take money from companies that I don't use their products and uh, pretend I use their products. Um, I just keep it real here, man. I finance the show myself. I'm an entrepreneur and uh, I don't like being told what to do. So I do the show at my own expense and I ask very simply in return that you support my companies, which you guys do. And I appreciate very, very much and then share the show. All right. So if we get a message uh, that you resonate with, if it makes you think, if it makes you laugh, if it makes you uh, better, if it's something that you think is important that needs to be shared and heard, please share the show. That's how we grow the show. Uh, if you don't share the show, we don't grow the show because, let's face it, we talk about things that uh, are not popular to talk about, and the platforms don't like our shows getting uh, out there on their own algorithms. So we're constantly dealing with censorship and shadow banning and all that. So if you don't share the show, it doesn't get out. So we need you guys to do that. So uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up, dude? What's going on? Nothing. What's up with you? It's weird, man. I keep like biting down on my damn stitches in my mouth. You still got them in there? I, they're still in there, bro. I th do they dissolve or do they got to take them out? Can you see them? No, I can't uh, see that far, man. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I'm fucking. I'm too old, bro. <laughs> I don't fucking see all the way over there. <laughs> it, bro, yeah. I hey, I'm yeah. just being real. Yeah, but I don't know what the is going on, man. They're, they're still there, and it's like, can you see the inside of my mouth from there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. No, I can't, bro. I got 20/20 vision. I have fucking surgical LASIK. Mm. I don't give a. How 2020 your vision is, I can, bro. I can see the inside of your throat. That sounded gay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on from that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm dealing with that. It's, it's, it's annoying, though. Um, yeah, everything's good, man. What's, what's going on with you? I don't know. I'm feeling a little uncomfortable over here. Yeah, why? Because you want to see the inside of my throat. I didn't want to. Yeah. You asked me. I just <laughs> gave you what you asked for. <laughs> 
Anything else I can do for you? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you can start there. <laughs> All right, oh, man. man. Let's get into it. Yeah, uh, what we got going on today? Let's well, get into I the real to, news. I wanted to uh, to pull up something first. Stop, t- stop talking about Andy's throat. Yeah, throat goat. I got, hey, I got throat coat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I got my throat coat right here, too, bro. <laughs> No, man, uh, worth bringing up something. This is uh, a lot of people crying right now. Oh, really? Yeah, apparently. Shocking. This is, yeah, this is a big deal. Um, and it's coming from a very interesting demographic. Mm. There's the young people and then anybody apparently over the age of 65. And the, the younger crying and the older crying. About the same thing. Okay. What's that? TikTok. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so Congress explores new bill to force a sale or ban of TikTok in America. And uh, their users are crying about it. Um, Not just crying, they're getting pretty pissed. A new bill that could ban TikTok from all U.S. phones and tablets is set for a vote uh, by a key House committee on Thursday, reflecting renewed bipartisan efforts to respond to national security concerns linked to the popular app. Uh, The draft legislation would uh, prohibit TikTok from U.S. app stores unless the social media platform uh, used by roughly 170 million Americans, is quickly spun off from its China-linked parent company, ByteDance. The House Energy and Commerce Committee is reviewing the bill. Um, so basically, once that goes in, they got 165 days, so it's about five months or so, um, to, to sell it, or it's going to be closed down. Um, that's essentially the ultimatum that they're giving them. Um, now, like I said, there's a lot of people that are getting pretty pissed about this. Um, and to I the, think they sent out an alert or something yesterday. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. so they're sending yeah. out alerts, push notifications as soon as you open up the app um, that is uh, that's telling you to con- contact your local congressman. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, they not, don't do shit. Well, yeah, exactly. What's that going to do? Well, apparently, like some congressmen have been talking about it because their phones are off the hook. Oh, really? Apparently, yeah, that's what they're saying. Notice how they didn't uh, make them contact their congressman when they were shutting the entire country down because of bullshit. Bullshit, yeah, right? Right, yeah. right. Um, let's not yeah. shut the country down. Let's not <laughs> let's not contact our congressman because we're feeding our kids hormones and right. cutting off their dicks. Right. Let's not con- let's contact them because they're about to lead our ability to propagate that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I think that's honestly, I think that's what's at the heart of it, right? Because you look at all the other social media companies, and you peel back that curtain of how our federal government had access to make calls when it came to censorship and those certain conversations, and TikTok was kind of. Um, unaffected by that yeah right and so mm-hmm. i think that's what a lot of this is this is more of like hey if we can't control you we'll just you just won't be able to to, yeah. to, to be exi- you won't yeah. be able to exist yeah. i think that's what that is um but yeah i mean so they were getting these pop-ups and um you got a couple of congress people talking about it so th- this is like one example you would log in and it would give you a push notification not just saying contact your congressman but sh- which your- one and it gives you the direct number like you push a button and it says call now so mm-hmm. it gives that's kind of like I mean, dude. It's pretty advanced now. It's not, I think that's more likely to get them banned than anything. You think so? We're being honest. Why yeah. is that? Well, because, dude, these people they're going to get pissed. Mm. The, the Congress people look, man. When someone really needs you, and you're working on shit that is like something not that, mm-hmm. and they continue to hit you up over and over and over again, do you get more likely to help them or less likely? Oh, less likely. Yeah, and these people, these are people too. Okay. Yeah, I see this. I see yeah. that. Uh, yeah, one of the the congressmen said the uh, uh, congresswoman. That one House GOP staffer tells me, quote, it's so bad, our phones have not stopped ringing. There are teenagers and old people saying they spend their whole day uh, on the app, and we can't take it away. Um, That's why they should take it away. I mean, it's probably probably necessary. So in a statement, uh, TikTok uh, responded, says, our statement on the latest TikTok legislation. This bill is an outright ban of TikTok, no matter how much the authors try to disguise it. This legislation will trample the First Amendment rights of 170 million Americans and deprive 5 million small businesses of a platform um, that they uh, continue to say they should be, be pushed into silence. So, Andy, what do we got on this? I say good riddance. I, I think all social media should be banned. Yeah. That's I, the thing. It's like, why not the other ones? I, well, because those ones are connected to the federal government. The federal government tells them and dictates them exactly what to allow and what not to allow, and TikTok doesn't allow them to do that. Because TikTok is owned by an international company mm-hmm. that happens to be based in China. Right. So, I mean, look, I've been very vocal about this, you know, and I don't think if you don't have, if you haven't lived pre social media and post social media as a full grown adult, your opinion on this is invalid. But I can tell you from my experience, and I think anybody who lived pre and post social media 
will tell you that social media has been a net negative for society mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah. And uh, as much as the opportunities that it's created and the successes that it's created, even for myself, I would trade it all if we could go back to having real life all the time. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's ruined, it's ruined culture. It's ruined family values. It's made people's attention span go to nothing. It's propagated cancel culture. It, it's, it's brought bullying to the forefront of people's faces. I mean, when you think about like the kids who have to deal with this shit, you know, growing up is pretty hard anyway. And now they got to read on the internet, all their classmates making fun of them or talking shit. You know, it's just not. It's not cool. Yeah. It, in the beginning, it was cool, like when people actually shared their lives. But let's be real, dude. Social media has become just one giant commercial. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, well, we're not even connected no more. Let's be real. You know what I'm saying? Like I see those like pictures and videos of like you know you look at like the New Year's Eve uh, ball drop, right? And you look in the crowd, and all you see is fucking phones in people's faces. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's you like can't... nobody's even experiencing yeah, the real fucking thing. You yeah. know? That's that's real shit. Yeah. So, like, in my opinion, you know, I think social media in general, and I think all platforms, I don't think just Instagram, uh, but the, I think they've all had a, a detrimental effect on culture and society. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's my opinion. And a lot of people will attack me when I say that because they'll say, well, you own company. Yeah, no shit. That's the environment, bro. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to work in the environment. The soil that I'm given, I'm going to work. Yeah. However... I can work the soil without social media because I actually grew businesses before social media. So I'm comfortable with that too. Um, I just think it's better for people. I think people are, you know, m more human and more real and more like better without it. And I think it just brings so much. Now I think there's good things too. I think it brings a lot of opportunity. I think there is a great entertainment aspect. There's lots of things that I like to watch and look at. I'm not saying it's all bad, but I'm saying when we say, like I, I tend to look at things as net negative or net positive, right? Like I look at people that way. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, I don't agree with everything they say. I don't, I don't you know, and that's something that social media has brought to, to the forefront of culture. Uh, you have to agree with it, everything that everybody says all the time. Otherwise you're a fake or you're a fraud or you're wishy-washy or you're not loyal. And that's just not reality. Like I can be friends with someone, I can vote for someone, I can be around someone that I don't necessarily agree with everything they say. I don't agree with everything they do, but I look at them and and the people I surround myself will will be a net positive. And if they're a net negative, I won't surround myself with them. And and I that's how I look at everything. I look at everything. Yeah. Is it a net positive or net negative? And I'm, when I'm being honest about social media and technology, and we think about what it's done to culture and how it's handicapped people from literally connecting and being capable and being able to do things and uh, be intelligent. It's a net negative, man. Yeah. You know, that's my opinion. Yeah, that's real shit, man. Guys, yeah. tell us what you guys think down yeah. in the comments. And, and that means, like, dude, if, you, if, if I were, if they were to shut the internet off and I were to disappear... That's okay with me. Because mm -hmm. that's the thing, man. Like, I mean, cause we've, they've been trying it, right? We had the, yeah. the internet blackout. We just yeah. had a social media blackout yeah. a few days ago. I was cool. Yeah. Like, I was all right. It was <laughs> when the cell phones went, dude, I, I think this extends into cell phones too. Um, you know, it's not just social media, it's cell phones as well. You know, the way business is right now, like when I talk to my dad about business or guys that are older than me about business, you know, they can't fully comprehend what it's like now to, to do a business because back in their day, you know, when, when they got done with work, bro, they, they locked the door. They went home. Man, not have to worry about no calls. That's not how it works yeah. anymore. It's yeah. nothing like that. And we, we as human beings are not designed to be bombarded with stimuli 24 hours a day like that. Like, if you're an entrepreneur now, because the competitive landscape has gotten so competitive... If you're not putting in that kind of work, you're going to you're going to lose, man. You know, and, and so like, dude, I don't know that that's good for people. Like it would be a lot better if we went back to the way it used to be where businesses were open from seven to, you know, five thirty or six or whatever. Or maybe you had a night shift or whatever you did. Um, 
but it didn't, you know, consume people's entire existence. And unfortunately, that's what it takes to build things that are relevant now. And, and you know, it takes away from other things because we only have so much time, so much energy, and so much ability to live our life when we're consumed with, a, with this right. whole other world. Right. And when we think about the purpose of social media, uh, it's designed that way. You know, it's designed for us to be sucked in, become addicted, um, and and force other companies to fight for the attention. Yeah, those users. it's it, yeah. you know, and I think I don't know. I yeah. I think it's bad. Yeah, I don't think it's good. And and yeah, and, you know, you well then and every time I say this, I get these fucking idiots that say shit like, "Well, then lead the way and leave social media and blah blah blah." Well, hey, guess what, dumb fuck. I'm trying to win the environment that I'm presented with. I can't control the environment. Yeah, that's not something you could be an innovator yeah. in. Really. Let me let me yeah. fucking quit and let these, you know, 500 people that I employ here in this building and thousands that I employ outside the building starve. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, it's just... No, the know. environment's just not ready for that yet. It's not there yet, you know? Um, I think social media, real talk, eventually will be looked at as cigarettes were looked at after people found out that they made you sick. Hmm. I think people are going to start looking at it like, you 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 still use social media? You fucking. I think eventually that. it will get to that point. Yeah. Culture will get to that point. Um, I read a stat. I don't know if it was true or not. That Instagram was the most deleted app last year, and if they delete TikTok, uh, that's going to change because I believe that the traffic will flow right back over to Instagram, hmm. or you know, it could be a new platform too. But I doubt that. Yeah, I'm interesting, know. man. Guys, let us know. Uh, well, you want you ready to do some uh, some cruising? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah, let's get into it, guys. Remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, headlines, articles, links, videos, go to andyfortella.com. You guys can find them linked there. That being said, headline number one. It's a big day today. Got the so to the what state of the union. Oh, Biden's gonna fuck it up. Um, mm -hmm. let's dive into this. So you got you got President Biden's 2024 State of the Union address. Now this is. I remember watching these as a little kid, man. These are always like that big deal. You know, you're watching the you know the world's leader, the country's leader, you know, strong up there speaking, and um, this would be this would be interesting because they're already not off to a good start. Uh, so let's dive into this a little bit. Uh, you got uh, OG press poo poo pants. Did you see that their initial uh, post that they put out on Twitter under the official President Biden account gave the wrong date? No. No, I didn't. This was the original post. Tune in at 9 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow evening for my plan on how we get it done. Live, <laughs> February 7th, State of the Union 2023. Yeah, they don't want people watching it. That's why. Quickly deleted it. <laughs> and, uh, they reposted it with this. Uh, I'm headed to the Capitol tonight to deliver my State of the Union address. Join us at 9 p.m. Eastern time to hear how far we've come in building the economy from the middle out and the bottom up. And the work we have left to lower cost and protect our freedoms against MAGA attacks. Yeah, that's a total lie. <laughs> Is it though? Remember, like I mean, no, that, you know, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm saying the, you know, we're building the economy from the middle out and the bottom up. Do you think that people that are in the middle class and in the uh, underneath the middle class, because I'm not going to say lower class, mm -hmm. but people who are below that class financially? Do you think that they do you think that they're going to believe someone whenever they know what their finances are every single week and then they know that they're not going as far as they were like what do you like what do these people think mm -hmm. like do you think you're going to convince people and gaslight people into believing that that's the truth when they clearly are having a harder time mm -hmm. you know like I saw a headline that they put out uh I don't know it wasn't the Atlantic I don't think but it was, maybe it was the Atlantic I can't remember I could be wrong on this but the the headline said Inflation is your fault. Oh, yeah. The okay. article was about yes. Oh man, like bro, the, remember how whenever they started saying inflation was made up, mm -hmm. not real, and then there was inflation was transitory. Mm -hmm. Then it was you know you're imagining it. You know, like now it's your fault. Yeah, yeah, dude. And these people, you know, these are shit bags. No. I mean, that's the thing. You guys have to understand. These people are pieces of shit. Yeah, he posted this picture. This is apparently him. He he said prepping for tonight, and uh, I just, the only thing I could notice how, was how big that font was. I know you got LASIK and stuff; you might not be able to see it, but no, I can see that. Good evening, <laughs> my fellow Americans, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Madam Vice President, members of Congress and the Cabinet, military leaders, 
distinguished guest. How about, um, how about you just stay home, man? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you're not our fellow American. No, There's you're like you're the anti-American. That's real. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, so he got pushed on uh, these note cards and shit that he's been prepping with. Did you see the uh, KGB respond to him? Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, I got the clip. Here's the clip. Oh man. One more, if I may. Uh, the president, I noticed, had had note cards la- at the border when he she was doing pissed. his uh, briefing there. He also had note cards uh, last Friday with the uh, Italian prime minister. Why does the president rely so heavily on note cards? You're upset because the president has note cards. Not you're upset. you're asking me a question about the president having note yes. cards. Yes. I'm asking why. The does president he rely who so has heavily? had a probably one of the most successful first three years of, of an administration than any modern day president. He's done more in the first three years than most presidents who had two terms. You're asking me about no cards. I don't think that's, I don't think I don't wait. I'm, I'm not speaking to you right now, James. I'm talking to, I'm talking to your friend over here, Ed. So thank you so much, but thank you so much for interjecting. Go ahead, Ed. I was just asking why, why he relies so heavily on no cards. I think what's important here and what the American people care about is how this president is delivering for, for them. And that's what he's doing. And that's, what's the most important thing here. How, how do these people come up there? Like, look at look at her face. Dude. <laughs> look at that smug ass shit. These people think they're better than everybody. They think we are fucking stupid. Mm. Yeah, well, you look at her face, dude. Yeah. Look at her fucking face. Uh, yeah, KGB, good old KGB. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, she's a piece of shit. She is. Now, here's the good yeah. news, guys. You know, if you guys have been affected by Biden inflation, um, there's a chance you guys can make some money tonight. Um, because apparently there is uh during the, the Biden State of the Union, Americans can place prop bets on gaffes, mix ups, and even a brain freeze. So this is a legit thing. So so Bet Online has created a plethora of money making opportunities around Thursday's important speech as the eighty one year old president hopes to quell national concerns about his cognitive abilities and mental fitness. So uh, you go there, and you can actually put bets in on how bad he's going to fuck this up, <laughs> and you can make some money off of your yeah. uh, off of the effects of his his doings. Uh, I thought that was interesting. Now, most, most mentions. Okay, what's he going to have here? The, what's he going to mention the most? Democracy, MAGA, Putin, or January sixth? Yeah, you got you got MAGA and J six at four hundred percent. Putin's at five hundred. I mean, five hundred plus. I think Mag is going to win that. Mag is going to win. Yeah, yeah. Over, I, I say he's probably going to say it like a fucking I, conservatively. I'm going to say a thousand. Times. On the top one, it says what is going to get the most mentions: the border, security, Ukraine, or guns. I'm going to say guns. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say guns. I'm. He's going to go up there. He's going to talk about how good the economy is, mm-hmm. and nobody's going to believe it. He's going to talk about how Maga is the problem. Mm-hmm. And then he's going to talk about how we need to get rid of guns because of the, the mass shootings. How many brain farts are we betting? I don't know. Do you think? Do you think that he? I'm, I'm sure quite a few. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be zero. I mean, look, we got to be we, we got to be fair too. We, like, let's be real. You know, if you watch Fox News, all they show is him looking like really bad. Mm-hmm. And if you watch him speak, other times, I mean, he can put a few sentences together. A I few mean, of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, look. The guy's not as bad as the right makes him out to be in terms of how bad he fucks up. They just show his fuck ups exclusively. Right. So, <laughs> right. Let you know. It's the same tactic seeing in. Yeah, but he's DT. pretty bad. Yeah. He's I mean, bad. I'm not saying he's good. Um. But yeah, I'm going with guns and MAGA. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah, that's we need bad. to check back and see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See what the hell, see what yeah. see what it comes out at. You know what's interesting though is is I think these people are such. I think they're I think they're very much so misreading the tip. The, yeah, mm-hmm. very much. I I think. Well, are they though? Because here's, here's my thing: are they? Because uh, you know, last night they built a, a, a security fence around the entire Capitol. Last yeah, night. I, I saw that. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah, right. Like they built an entire construct, like constructed an entire wall that surrounded the entire U.S. Capitol building. It's like fucking ten feet tall. Um think that was that's interesting you know yeah. so are they out of touch with with the tip or are they just pretending to be out of touch with the tip and they don't care i i think they are out of touch with it i think they i think they don't comprehend the fact 
that their numbers are legitimately like in the basement. And I don't think they're understanding that the more that they continue to talk about MAGA and Trump, the more at this point they're pushing people that way. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't want to hear about your trash talk on MAGA and Trump when they were paying their bills and had a decent life under Trump. They don't really don't give a shit, bro. People care about themselves. They care. They say, okay, did I, was my life better then or was my life better now? And most people are saying my life was better then. Mm-hmm. And so the more he talks and the more he blames this shit on Trump, which is clearly their strategy, I actually think the more he's pushing people towards Trump mm-hmm. at this point in time. Yep. So well, I, the, data's, the data's supporting that. Yeah, so I think he's his own worst enemy at this point. They don't talk about anything that's actually relevant to people. They lie to people. They gaslight people, just like I said a minute ago. When they say, you know, hey, uh, you know, inflation is not real or we're, the economy's doing great and people can't pay their shit, that pisses people off, bro, because they know better. And then, you know, people are starting to talk again, right? Right, right, Like, after the pandemic, people were a little less social and they didn't communicate. And so this gaslighting worked a little better then because people weren't talking. They were thinking, well, fuck, man, maybe it's just me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm the only one that's hurting. Maybe. But now they're talking to their friends. They're talking to their neighbors. They understand that times are a little bit tougher than what, or a lot tougher than what, they were in the past and it's not just them. So every time, you know, uh, KGP gets up there and says this stupid ass shit, uh, lies to people. Every time Biden goes up there and lies about the economy and then blames it on Trump and all this, like, bro, people, it's just, it's lifting the veil more and more to show who these people really are. So, um, I imagine that whatever he says tonight is just going to push more people to Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, let us know what you guys think. Make sure you guys join in on February 7th, 2023 at 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. You guys don't miss it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no shit. (laughs) It's just crazy to me how old and elderly these people are that are running the country and making decisions for the rest of us. Yeah. Like, we're suffering because of the decisions of a bunch of decrepit old people that are going to be dead in a few years because they're trying to pad their bank accounts for their own family's well-being for the next hundred years on their way out the door. You know, Biden knows he's going to be dead soon. You don't think he fucking knows that? They all know that. So that's they know, that's why they don't care about stealing all the money and doing all this shit, because it's going to benefit the people coming behind them. Right. They're all in on it, man. They're all in on the destruction of what you and I know as America, 100%. Yeah. And the evidence shows that. The evidence does not show... You know, when KGP says he's done more in three years than any other president, she doesn't finish the thought. The the rest of the thought is to destroy America. Right. And that's the that's that's a true sex. That is a true statement. Yeah. He has done more in three years to destroy America than any other president that has ever been president, including Jimmy Carter, which was pretty fucking bad. So isn't he still alive? Yeah. Apparently. It's like 102 or something. Yeah. Well, it's because he's a fucking lizard. (laughs) <laughs> there it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, we might as well go all the yeah, way let's in. Just get there. Yeah, yeah let's get, where's my do rag at? Yeah, no shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, guys, tell us what you guys think. Jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know. And yep. uh, that being said, let's go head over to one. Yeah. Um, this is. I, I, th- I saw this comment. I thought it was pretty cool. We talk about temperature changes all the yeah, time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, this is a, a perfect example of that. This comment comes from at uh, Marco. Trulio, 56, 28, he says, I'm an American-born citizen. My mom was born here. My dad was born in Mexico. He's a permanent resident. We are taught as a culture to vote Democrat. We are taught that Republicans are racist in general. Over the last five to ten years, let me tell you, the amount of Hispanics who are now leaning towards the right is astounding. Even my mom says she's voting Trump, and she's a lifelong Democrat voter. She's had enough. Mexican-Americans are waking up in massive numbers. We work for our shit. We work hard. We have traditional family conservative values. We believe in Christ. And we came here to contribute, not to take just like 90% of all the family lineages who are here today. That's a major shift. There's a major shift happening. Yeah, dude. Hey, look, this is why I always try to clarify. You know, if you come here under legal methods, and honestly, if you come here from Mexico, I don't really care how you came here. If we're being honest, I feel like you guys are our our people. And, uh, you know, there's a great sharing of culture between Mexico and the United States, and there always has been. And uh, the Mexican culture here in the United States, I think, is generally appreciated by the other cultures. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're one of the most welcoming, wholesome cultures that we have in the United States. 
And that's not the people I'm talking about when I talk about sending them all back where they came from. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these people from Africa. I'm talking about these people from uh, uh, Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about these people from China that are all military age males that don't belong here. Right. Okay. So, you know, I, I love this. I, I, you know, this is Marco, you're the fucking man for saying this shit. And, and, uh, and I, it's, it's refreshing to hear. Because the the idea that Republicans are all racist, that's a Democrat lie. That's a lie that they use because they don't have any real policy to stand on. So what they do is they stir people's emotions around identity as opposed to around the issues. And when we look at how the Democrats do that and you step back and you unemotionally detach yourself from their techniques, it's very easy to see what's happening. It's very manipulative. It's full of bullshit. And uh, if they had anything... That was a benefit. They would talk about those things. You know, it's kind of like when someone's trying to sell something and all they do is talk shit about the competitor. That means that their product has no value. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So like it's that's what they're that's what they do. They all they do is talk shit on the Republicans. They say everything is their fault. Everything is this guy's fault or that guy's fault because he votes this way or he's this race. And then in reality, they go up to Washington, D.C., and they make rules and regulations that hurt the very people that vote for them so that they can get richer and more powerful. And it's nice to see people waking up to that. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Yeah. It's beautiful. I appreciate the comment, Marco. Yeah. Um, Appreciate all you guys. Yeah, yeah. All you guys commenting. You guys all real-ass fans. Real-ass fans, baby. That's what's up. Yeah. We got to make a shirt for that. Let's do it. Like if like if people get their comment mentioned on the show, we should send them a real ass fan shirt. Be like a ceiling fan. Yeah, it's or like, like the, a, <laughs> yeah, we put a ceiling ceiling fan on it. Or like a little desk fan. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like or a real. furnace that works in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker calls me this morning. Get <laughs> pissed off, dude. Uh, Fucking hot. And let me tell you something, bro. DJ is about as calm as it gets, dude. He don't get. <laughs> worked up and he's like these motherfuckers came to clean my ducks and they me dude they told me it was going to be 200 bucks and then they told me it was going to be a thousand dollars and then they told me that uh they told me uh what they tell you then they dropped it to five they dropped to five because you said no right yeah yeah and they broke my shit yeah so then they broke his shit so it doesn't work and i'm like oh man that sucks you know you don't have to get your ducks clean and he's like what do you mean and I'm like, you don't have to get your ducks clean, bro. You just go down there and you flip the reverse switch on the on the furnace and it sucks all that shit out. It goes right in the filter. <laughs> I'm down there looking for a fucking he's like, he's like, He's like, bro, I, I don't see it. I got a new furnace, man. It's not one of the old ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh fuck, man. Dude. Yep. Got a first time homeowner over here. Dude, listen. Somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, well, you know what? When you fuck people, that's what happens. People get hurt. People get hurt. Yep. And somebody's getting hurt. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that they really enjoy us profiling their company on our show. Oh, so they can either It's not make, even a real company, bro. They can make it right. Or fucking scammers. We can put them out of business. Yeah, that's what they yeah, You guys need to listen. If you are listening, you need yeah. to listen to fucking Real AF so you can get some fucking Listen, motherfucker. There's a reason I don't put people on blast. Because our people are fucking savages, bro. That's they true. will fucking ruin people. Yeah. And even when people attack me, I don't turn them loose on people because I'm like, you don't know what yeah. you've done. <laughs> yeah, you don't. But if we need to, we'll get after people. Yeah. Won't we, guys? I'm going to hurt these people. Yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you guys for being real. Yeah. Let's keep this cruise moving. Headline number two. Headline number two reads, Boxing legend Mike Tyson to face off against Jake Paul in July bout. Quote, I plan to finish him. Who's that quote by? Who do you think it's by? I think it's by Jake Paul. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson said that? Mike Tyson. He did? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he says that, yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean, listen, hey. You know, you know. I just talked about this on the show a couple weeks. Well, I like your lion analogy, right? You know, you got the the lion, the king of the fucking jungle, Uh and the little lions try to come up and fucking, he ain't ready for the takeover yet, bro. Mike Tyson is not, listen, he is not done by any force. Let's, Let's dive into this. Yeah. Let's dive into this. So Mike Tyson... Uh, this is a Fox News article. Uh, one of the greatest fighters to ever step into the boxing ring uh, will do so again this summer when he takes on one of the sport's most polarizing new faces in what will uh, surely be the most anticipated sporting event of the year. Jake Paul, a YouTube star turned boxer. I love their uh, their classification of him. 
Uh, will take on the former heavyweight boxing champion on July 20th at the Dallas Cowboys home, AT&T Stadium, in a match that will be streamed exclusively on Netflix. Quote, it's crazy to think that in my second pro fight, I went viral for knocking out Nate Robinson on Mike Tyson's undercard. Now, less than four years later, I'm stepping up to face Tyson myself to see if I have what it takes to beat one of boxing's most notorious fighters and biggest icons, Paul said in the statement released by Netflix and most valuable promotions. Quote, my sights are set on becoming a world champion, and now I have a chance to prove myself against the greatest heavyweight champion ever, the baddest man on the planet, and the most dangerous boxer of all time. This will be the fight of a lifetime. Uh, now, the fight will mark Paul's second bout of the year and Tyson's first since his exhibition uh, match with Roy Jones Jr. in 2020. Quote, he's grown significantly as a boxer over the years, uh, so it will be a lot of fun to see what uh, the will and the ambition of a kid can do with the experience and aptitude of a goat, Tyson's statement read. Um, now, just for reference, I have a video here of Mike Tyson at 55 years old doing just a little sparring. Yeah. Let, let's, let's watch it. Ain't no fucking chance, bro. <laughs> Ain't no chance. Here, here's the thing, okay? Jake Paul's a real athlete. No, He's a real fucking boxer, too, at this point. Undoubtedly. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. A lot of people like to hate on that dude. Jake is a Jake trains harder. He's smart as fuck. He works harder than probably anybody in the sport right now. The dude's super driven. He's the, He's a real thing, okay? And a lot of people trash talk him because he's... He, he's fighting these guys who are not like boxers his age at the top level. Well, dude, he ain't there yet, okay? Mm -hmm. He just started boxing three years ago. So I think for what he's done so far is super impressive. Super fucking impressive. However, Mike Tyson is a different kind of human being. Yeah. And here's the thing that the concern I have for the fight. R real talk. When when he fought Roy, Roy Jones, you could tell that Mike Tyson was holding back. Baby, he was he being was very nice. He was going 30%, bro. Uh, dude, he could have killed that guy. Yeah. Real talk. And people are going to be able to see if Mike Tyson comes out and f does that same shit with Jake. And they're going to call it out because yeah. because Jake has – that's the that's the narrative right now. He's not fighting big enough people. He's not – he's fighting has-beens. He's doing – that's what people like to say. I think it's great that he's doing it because I think this is eventually going to lead to him being a legitimate boxing champion. However, if Mike Tyson goes in there and fucks off and then Jake somehow wins, bro, I, I think it'll be bad. I think it's going to be bad for the brand. That's my opinion. And here's the other thing. If Mike Tyson goes in there and they're having an exhibition and Jake happens to clip that dude, like let's say a little too hard or pisses him off, all that talk of how this is going to go before the fight is going out the window and this dude is going to try to fucking kill him. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is a different kind of dude. Yeah. Like, he can, he, he, Mike Tyson. Do you understand what I'm saying? There, we there can will make be all, a switch that yes, happens. Yes. And if Jake goes in there and cracks this dude in a way that, like, maybe stuns him or, like, or hits bro, him too hard than they talked about. <laughs> listen, there's going to be a fucking problem. Yeah. Cause this guy still moves like he's thirty years old, and yeah, that I know, fucking dude. Video, bro, he's fifty-five I, years I, old. I know, but hey, guess what? Fifty-seven. Hey, you gonna watch it? Yeah. Fuck yeah, everybody's Fuck watching yeah. it. We're watching. It's together. a brilliant move. Yeah. All right, I am a Jake Paul fan. A lot of people get. No, I like Jake Paul. Yeah. I like. I like. I, I yeah. think I, even Mike Tyson's story, bro. I'm a like, Mike Tyson where, fan too. Where he started, where yeah. he's at. I mean, the demons that he's battled, bro. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, he's a great. And I think he's a great man. Yeah. You know, but like. He will still get down, bro. And like I watch those interviews, bro. You he, see those interviews where he's like he's talking. He's like, bro, I try to like I don't want that part of me no more. I've tried yeah. to 
Bro, that piece comes out, bro. Like, it's over. It's going to be interesting, dude. I mean, it really is. I, I think, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what they got planned. It, their, their statements are respectful of each other. Very respectful. Yeah. And uh, I think that would be intelligent on Jake's part to keep it respectful because <laughs> the last thing you want is a fucking super, like, legit yeah. Mike Tyson walking into that ring because, bro, that, that guy ain't playing around. No. Like, like, listen, dude, this guy went to prison. He beat motherfuckers' asses in prison. Like, this is a real dude this is not this guy ain't playing no. and he might be a professional at this point in his life and he might have zenned out a little bit yeah. and, you know he's, some shrooms. he's eating some mushrooms right. And right. he's got some good life advice <laughs> but you slap that guy the wrong way and that guy will kill you mm-hmm. so like and if he don't kill you in the ring he might kill you out of the ring it's very possible like man. dude like so you know it's a f-ing, uh it's gonna be awesome and i can't wait to watch that's the truth yeah fuck. that's the truth i can't wait to fucking watch and dude this is just a testament to Jake's ability to market himself and personal brand himself. He's one of the best in the f-ing world at doing it. So I think it's I think it's awesome. Uh, you know, you're gonna see Jake Paul eventually become a multi billionaire because he's gonna leverage this all into business. Uh, you know, obviously same for Logan, because mm-hmm. what they're doing with Prime and the other things they got going on. And uh it's exciting to see young men kick ass. I like yeah. that shit. And you know, these are two regular dudes from Ohio. That uh, aren't afraid to be polarizing and aren't afraid to be who the fuck they are, and they go out and they kick ass and build cool shit, and I think it's awesome. I, I'm rooting for them. But uh, if if you if Mike Tyson said, "Hey, we're gonna go eighty percent," and you decide to stick them, you go eighty one. It's fucking over. Listen, run. <laughs> you know, you put the moth away. Yeah, bro. I've excited about it i think it's going to be badass yeah all right guys what do you guys yeah. think let us know down I, in the I, comments. I listen i'll say this this is what i'm gonna say mike tyson goes hard mm-hmm. jake goes hard they go hard like let's say it's a real match and they go hard as fuck i think mike tyson's probably gonna do some real damage yeah that's that's my opinion yeah the guy's been doing it his whole life he's still in shape he still fucking moves, moves he's fast quick. as fuck. you know this might have been too big of a. Bite. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know, yeah. man. I don't know. Jake. Jake's a winner, dude. Like he has the ability to win. I'm just saying, you know, it might be my. It might be because of my age, bro. I grew up watching Mike Tyson fucking destroy people, dude, over and over and over and over and over. And when I see him move now, he looks the same. And, and he doesn't look like an old man. Bit. No, man. You know. So I. Don't, I don't know, man. It's gonna be fucking awesome though. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, guys, put down in the comments who you guys think has this uh has this fight. Let's let's get yeah. a poll going. Bro, speaking of boxing, did you see that video? Did you see the Ryan Garcia shit? Bro, I looked at a little bit of it. I didn't go deep in it, bro. Did you see that video I sent you? No. Where they were like making him apologize for what he said and shit? Here, I'll get it up. Yeah. This clip right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the one I sent you. Here to announce my return back to Instagram. Now, over these past couple of days, you guys have seen some pretty intense things. I understand what they are and I understand what they look like. But I'm coming back to announce, I'm not gonna speak on any other topic other than boxing, sports, and my fight. That's the only thing I'm gonna be talking about. And uh, I'm training for this fight. I want everybody to know this fight's still on. 420, five weeks of super focus. I have PBD helping me in this camp and many other warriors. So I thank you guys for the support and I'll see you guys on 420. Now, now, what's the backstory? Because didn't he get like a... Well, dude, he... he. I mean, look, man. Ryan Garcia is one of the best boxers out there. Mm-hmm. All right? He's very famous. And uh, very good. Very, very good. And he's very popular on social. Mm-hmm. Um, and about, I don't know, a week ago, two weeks ago, he started talking about all this, like, Illuminati, like the shit we talk about, right? Yeah. And he did, got on this live on Twitter with Tate and did this... Uh, he started... Tate was like... So what's going on? And he's like, bro, they fucking took me to the woods and they tied me up and they made me watch them rape kids and like start talking about all this shit. Uh, He claims to have been abducted and seen aliens during the Twitter stream. Dude, dude, all like super out of character stuff for him. And there was a lot of theories, you know, that somebody stole his phone or he got hacked, but he didn't. And, uh. And then all of a sudden this crazy video shows up where they're making him sit in chair. I mean, I would say they making him, but. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, did, did that look like that was something that he came up with that on his own? That looked forced. That looked like some dudes were standing on the other side of the camera with some fucking guns saying, some bro, you cards. better say this shit. Exactly. I mean, I mean that's that, exactly what he, I mean, yeah. he wouldn't did even you maintain, see his eyes? Wouldn't his, maintain an eye contact. see his eyes? Yeah. 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 I got the, the original clip here when he was talking about 
I mean, yeah, like, I mean, dude, he was t- tweeting stuff out. Please help. Uh, please send help. Pray. Send prayers. I'm calling all prayer warriors. If they kill me, it wasn't me. Are the people going to get behind me or let them kill me? That's the real question. Let Ryan die or help me. Um, fuck, man, that's some deep stuff. Yeah. This was, uh, I think this is one of the clips from uh, from the thing. Let's see what it says. Yo, Andrew. Hey, bro. All right, talk to us. Bro, I don't give a f- bro. They held me down and they made me watch the little kids get raped. I don't give a f- anymore. Where? Bro, they f- took me to the f- in woods, bro, and they f- tied. I'm not f- joking, bro. I have f- proof, bro. I don't give a. F- bro, I f- will show you every f- video you could ever f- believe. Bohemian Grove is real. They f- tied me down and they made me f- watch, dog. I absolutely don't give a f- anymore. Yes, I f- lost it. They're raping little kids. He doesn't want to take us all. So let's Bro. Go. Come on. Come on, Ryan. He doesn't want to take oh, us all. Yeah. So you didn't hear that until just now? No. That was my yeah, dude. Time, so man. that's been going on for a while now. Shit. And dude, ever like John Rich. Do you know John Rich, a country guy from yeah, Big and Rich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came out and he's like, Bro, I got invited to Bohemian Grove, you know, by a bunch of high power country executives. I always said no. Like, dude, there's a bunch of people coming out now saying, Yeah, they got yeah. asked to go and this and that. And uh, it's just interesting because, you know, they deny, 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 deny. And then all of a sudden you got this guy who's saying all this shit, looking like he just spent the last three days crying his eyes out, apologizing, saying, I'm not talking about any." Like, that was the most posed fucking apology or whatever you want to call that possible. And it makes you wonder, like, what the f*** are they doing to this guy? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, fuck his eyes, man. Like, Dude, it's all, it's all it in the It doesn't look right. And people, people always dismiss these guys as crazy. They say, oh, dude, he's on drugs, or he's on this, or he's on that. Who knows what the f*** they're doing to this guy, right? Like, look at Kanye, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, Kanye, like, look at what they do to these people. Look at Michael Jackson. Look at Prince. Look at what they do to these mother people when they start to speak out, bro. They make them look crazy, and then one day they're dead, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, so fuck, man. That's wild. Yeah, bro. I, I, this, this makes me nervous for him. Mm. You know what I mean? Because clearly he's in over his fucking head yeah. with something. Because Somebody he doesn't... got to him, bro. Huh? Somebody got to him. Yeah, I know. Fuck. That's well, wild. it would be nice if all these people that... It would be nice if all the people who know about this would just come out so they couldn't get everybody at once. Mm-hmm. You know? But, no, that's the only way you can fix it. I know. But, you know, they, what they do is they terrorize the one or two people that do it to the point where the rest of the guys won't come out. This is all intimidation, bro. Fuck, that's wild. Man. Guys, have you seen this? Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Yeah. I don't know, man. I hope he's good, though. Guys, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Um, I know we talked about uh, social media a little earlier uh, in the show. Um, and it is a net negative. I think that's what the conclusion was. Let's talk about what could potentially be a good positive. All right. Um, so this headline reads... Soon, Grok will summarize U.S. laws before they are passed, says Elon Musk. Um, So this is a big one coming out of uh, Twitter. So Grok, this new AI tool is coming out. You know, we talk about how these bills that get presented in Congress, these 3,000 page bills with 5,000 different initiatives get all lumped in and nobody's reading all of that shit. Um, and so Elon Musk is now proposing. That's their technique. Right. That's that, that, that is their technique stuff. for sure. Right. right. Um, all the little buddy deals, all the little, you know, backdoor handshake deals. They're yeah. all in those pages, yeah. but nobody's reading that. Yeah. I'm not reading it. Yeah. Um, and so, they don't give you enough time to read it. No, they no, no. put it out and it, you got 16 hours. hours later, it's exactly. fucking, you got to sign you gotta it. Vote on that's it. how they get this shit through. People don't understand that dude. Yeah, and it was, and, and if you don't think that's how it's done, when it was proposed to not do it that way, and it was proposed to do single bill fucking issue passes, it was all rejected. Yeah, almost unanimously. Yeah, you know, so that's exactly how they do it. Yeah, and that should be illegal. It absolutely, should. every law that's passed by our Congress should be clearly stated and summarized, law by law, on one sheet of paper. That's how it should be. Very simple. Every single human being should know exactly what laws these people are passing. They should not be able to say border security bill and then send 
two hundred billion dollars to a foreign country. Yeah, that's not that. That's for gender studies. Yes, because that's how that's, they do it. That's absurd shit. Except for the place that it's going to, you know, your brother-in-law's nephew has a company that's set up over there. That's yeah, also, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's fucked yeah. up shit. Yeah. That's how they do it. Yeah. Um, so this might be a fix. Let's dive into it. So tech titan Elon Musk took to Twitter on Friday to unveil Grok's latest. Tech titan Elon Musk took to X, formerly Twitter. <laughs> I still, I, do you not remember me saying this when he took over? It ain't going to happen. It I said work. it will never take. It's bad branding. Yeah. You know what, what do I, you call it? What do you call a tweet now? Yeah. It's an X. You call it an X? Right. Do you remember me saying that? You're Xing. Do you remember the people being like, oh, you fucking know what you're talking Here we are years later. <laughs> and people still got to say this. And, yeah. <laughs> so just chalk that up to another motherfucking thing I'm right about. I'm going to start rubbing this shit in your fucking faces till you guys just go out in the world and be like, no. Yeah. He's right. I always get nervous. Like when I'm cruising, I got to go to Twitter. I always get nervous because you got to type in the, the website, you know? Yeah. I always get nervous. I don't get it. Because I don't want no... Because DJ watches a lot of porn. No, that's not... Oh. No, I'm just... But like Is X, it X.com? X.com. Oh. And you know, like, you know, there might be... Not not on my... I'm just saying, like, I feel like... Not, I wanna, yeah, not, 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 not me. You know, not, not me, but other guys, you know. They, like, they, might, just, they might accidentally <laughs> click on them boobies, you know what I'm saying? Laughing, but not me. I would never do that. To him. I don't like boobies. <laughs> DJ doesn't like boobies. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so yeah, he's uh, so on Friday he unveiled Grok's latest. I'm asking feed. for a friend. <laughs> uh, the latest feat is decoding mammoth laws before they pa- uh, before their passage through Congress. So Grok, the chatbot developed by Musk's startup uh, XAI, will reportedly simplify complex legislation by summarizing it for the public eye in the coming weeks. So here's the here was the tweet. Uh, in the coming weeks, Grok will summarize these mammoth laws before they are passed by Congress so you know what their real purpose is. Um, and it's been received overwhelmingly positive by uh, a vast majority of people. So originally introduced in November 2023, Grok boasts unique capabilities that set it apart from its peers. Uh, Musk emphasized Grok's real-time access to information via X and its internet browsing prowess, enabling it to fetch up-to-date data uh, from the web on specific topics. It was launched as a direct competitor to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Um, yeah, so like ChatGPT, Grok also possesses internet browsing capabilities, allowing it, uh, it to provide users with comprehensive and timely information. So that's the difference to set it out. So this is this Grok is from Elon. Correct. Be interested to see what kind of programming they put into that AI. You know, yeah, as far as like, the, this, like woke white shit people shit, shit. Black, yeah. Yeah, 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 black George Washington, right? You know, <laughs> come on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wait, who do they bro, they listen. These these progressive liberals that write that code and shit. No, listen, bro. These people these people are insane. Yeah. They're insane. They put that. What shit was in that there? comment that guy made the other day about I was making broad statements about progressives or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's because they're accurate. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> that's because I can say broad statements because you're all the fucking same. Exactly. You don't think for yourselves. You think you are part of the resistance when you are part of the machine. If you start to think for yourselves and show a little bit of diversity of thought over there, maybe I would delineate that mm-hmm. but since you don't i generalize yeah so thanks for your comment fuck off yeah <laughs> but yeah so i mean so so we talk about benefits right i mean like is is this a net positive when it, as far as this ai shit goes yeah i mean this is this is how it could be used for good but it's going right. to be interesting to see how it's not used for good i mean like look dude we're eliminating the ability for people to actually know things mm-hmm. and if you talk to the people who are writing this ai they will tell you that's the point. The po- like, dude, if you go listen to the to the main people behind these AI platforms, they all have this this vision for the future. Which you know, they make it sound real good, right? Like they make it sound like, hey, look, we 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 don't want someone to have to. We want the computer to do everything. We want the computer to like you tell the computer what it what it wants, what you want, and it just does it. And so that evens the playing field because you're going to have to think to put the creative inputs into the computer. That sounds good, right? Because it's like, okay, well, now we can just teach people how to critically think and they can use the tools available to create. That sound, Does that sound good? Yeah. It sounds fucking great. The problem is, is that common sense knowledge, how to operate in the real world, 
how to do things, how to know skills. These things go out the window the more that we depend on these devices. And so what we end up with is a bunch of people who think they're real smart but are incapable in reality. So, you know, this goes generally, I think AI is the most dangerous threat that we are facing as humans, especially when you look to combine it with robotics, which is what Elon Musk is talking about doing. What happens, you know, a lot of blue collar people that listen to the show, which by the way, I love you guys. It's part of the reason I do this shit. I come from family of blue collar people. Um, you know, my aunts, my uncles, all my family, these, these are hardworking fucking people, bro. And um, my friends and like, we're in Missouri. That's, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's where we are. Like, and these guys will tell me, well, you know, like I got to, I'm going to have job security because I do this or I'm going to have job security because I no, you're not, mm -hmm. you don't understand. They're going to combine this with robotic and make the labor force completely irrelevant. Yep. They're going to put this in the machines. The machines are going to run themselves, bulldozers, dump trucks, all that shit. You're not going to have a fucking job, dude. And your alternative here is going to be t to accept a universal basic income, which is predetermined by our government. Do you think they're going to overpay you? Hmm. Do you think they're going to give you this life of luxury? And do, when have they done anything to benefit you? When have they made a decision that overly benefits you in the history of your life? They are going to pay you the least amount possible, and they are going to keep the most amount possible for themselves. And they're going to tell you that you will be happy and you will own nothing and you won't have to work and you won't have to, but you'll be eating fucking crickets, man, because that's all you can afford. And that's what people don't understand. We put this idea in their head that they're going to be able to live this utopian life when in reality, bro, it's going to be just like every other communist revolution that's existed and people are going to starve. So it's very dangerous where we're going, in my opinion. The AI platforms are highly biased. We can all see that when they're pumping out pictures of black George Washington and saying, you know, tell me something uh, good about white people. It won't answer the question. These are major problems in our culture. Yeah, that has been in intentionally. Embedded. Yes. And they're trying to force that narrative into culture and society for the purpose of division like we talk about all the time because if we're fighting over you being black and me being white or you being gay and me being straight are you be yeah i know you are why, it's why, okay why, why, yeah why, i'm looking right at you you're the one talking about my fucking throat bro you're talking about coating my throat and shit that's fucking that it is what it is bro i still love you but like we're gonna talk about you know uh left or right <laughs> wait, what wait, hold on i'm making a response to that no because it's true but here's the thing we, we have to get to a point where we, have, we understand what the fuck they're actually trying to do, and they're trying to do it with technology now, and the reason they want us fighting over all this identi identity politics nonsense is because they don't want us to notice what they're doing to us. So, you know, I don't believe in any of this stuff. I think it's all terrible, and I don't know, I don't know there's anything we can do about it because a lot of people think it's great, yeah. and the most greedy people on earth who haven't made any money yet, and, and, and by the way, I understand why they think this way. I'm not saying, I, when I didn't have shit in my life, I was using every single, I have the luxury at this point in my life to think like, okay, well this is ethical, this is not ethical, this is the right way, this is not good for people. When I was young and I, I didn't have any choice, you did whatever the fuck you had to do. And everybody does that. So when they look at the technology, all they see is the opportunity and because people are, you know, our system is set up in such a way where it's hard for people to get ahead, they're willing to adopt these tools regardless of what the consequences are. So that's my take on this stuff, man. And uh, I'm not saying, you know, it's not going to become the way of the world. I'm not saying we're going to be able to stop it. I, I hope we can. Yeah. There should be some regulations about AI. It should be, I think it personally should be illegal globally. How are you going to get every country to do that? You see what I'm saying? Right. So like there's, there's, we're coming to a different era and a different crossroads and it's going to be important for people to support companies with their dollars more than ever that actually do business the way that they think it's act morally correct to do for humanity. And that's going to be creating real jobs. That's going to be, you know, doing the best you can to maintain uh, opportunity for your community. Uh, it's going to be the companies that actually support your community. Um, it's getting back to supporting small businesses and not being the funders of all of this drastic change by us continuing to support these companies because it's convenient for us. That's my take, you know? Um, 
but I don't know what's going to happen and I don't have enough social clout and I don't think a single person on this earth has enough social clout to actually stop this. I think it's going to take a collective rejection. And when you see people running down the street with goggles on and shit, don't go buy them. Mm. When you see companies that use AI and don't, you know, uh, employ any human beings and they've got all completely automated functions, uh, you shouldn't buy from those companies. You should be buying from companies who are using the least amount of technology possible to create as much value possible in their communities for actual humans, which are your neighbor. Whether they live in St. Louis or whether they live in Chicago or whether they live in Florida or whether they live in California, we are still neighbors. We have to still look out for each other and we have to look out for each other in this country or, or, or we're going to be, a lot of us are going to be in deep shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's real shit, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you think. All right, with that being said, man, let's get to our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up and thumbs fuck. This is where we bring a headline in, we talk about it, and we get one of those two options. With that being said, our thumbs up or dumb as fuck headline reads, Texas mom is charged after sending son to school with booby-trapped lemon salt and vinegar drink to get revenge on kids who kept stealing it, with child thief who drank the concoction left hospitalized. You're hospitalized because of how? Because you drink lemon salt and vinegar, I guess. What does that do to someone? Does that do something to someone? I feel like, I don't know. Listen, I don't really see anything. A uh, student became sick and got a headache after consuming the spiked drink. The spiked drink with vinegar and salt and lemon that he was stealing. Mm -hmm. From another, from. from, That he was bullying a kid with. Right. I mean, I, you know. (laughs) Take some time. So now they're going to charge the mom for for that? (laughs) That's absurd. It's crazy. Crazy. Them kids, Some bro. In my back when I was shit. back when I was a, when I was a kid, like if shit like that happened, yeah. where you were continuing, like people were bull, bro. The dad would show up to school and and go at the kid, mm. like that. I've so you know what my tactic's gonna be, bro. Like, bro, listen, if Ryan ever gets fucking bullied. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the kid. All right, I'm gonna take him to the parents' house. I'm gonna tell the parent if this if, if your little fucking, uh, cum rug doesn't fucking stop fucking my kids, I'm gonna beat your ass. Yeah, well, that's gonna be the. You fix. know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a van. I'm gonna get some rope. I'm gonna get a shovel and some lime. And so, oh, wait, what's the lime gonna do? You don't know enough about oh, this, then. Clearly, razor blades and lemon juice. I'm with you. I'm just saying, those are gonna yeah. be on the inventory list. <laughs> Your local Ace Hardware. Yeah. Bro, what the fuck is yeah. this guy doing? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're gonna get back to old school shit. Right hey, here. listen, visual it, anti justice. It needs to it's coming back. It needs to you happen. want to control your fucking kids? What? Oh, I thought there was a finishing punch. There was. Oh. You can assume the rest. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Nah, that's these little fu- These little fucking rug rats. <laughs> fuck, fuck these fucking kids. Fucking cum rags, bro. Like, listen. like Put them like, in a fucking van. His mom, the, the, the kid who got hot, like, and listen, they use that word too crazy to hospitalize. Motherfucker didn't get hospitalized. Oh, he went to the nurse's room exactly. with a headache. Exactly. Exactly. Let's, not, let's look a little bit He went to the this. nurse's room with a fucking black eye. That's what he should have done. Yeah. Yeah, Texas mom has been jailed after sending her son to school with a special lemon salt and vinegar drink that landed another student in the hospital. Jennifer Lynn Rossi, 45, put the feral concoction inside a sports bottle and gave it to her son to bring to school to get back at his bully who stole from him. Um, The son attends Legacy Traditional School Alamo Ranch, 20 miles northwest of downtown San Antonio. During PE class on Tuesday, Rossi's son gave the bottle to his classmate who allegedly stolen his drink the day before. He was taken to the hospital after drinking the mixture when he became uh, when he began to experience nausea and a headache. That little kid's a liar. How much did he f-ing drink? Because listen, like yeah, one bat, fucking drink. That's what I'm saying. You take a little swig, like come yeah, on. And then he played the victim. This is typical dude. His parents are f-ing progressive liberals. Pussies. Yeah. Bully, 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 and then when they get punched back, they f-ing cry like a little bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, so it says, "quote Upon arriving to the school, deputies learned that the sick child was given a drink by a classmate during PE class." Bexar County Sheriff's Office said in a statement about the incident. Although the contents of the drink were non-toxic, the incident resulted in a child being hospitalized. A hospital staff informed the investigator that the child victim required additional medical monitoring. Um, and would eventually be discharged from the hospital. Um, an investigation revealed that Rossi intentionally mixed the drink together to prevent her son's drink from being stolen at school by other students, according to officials. Yeah, I mean, listen. Or you think that you think that uh, they're going to steal his drink again? 
I doubt it. Listen, those drinks are expensive. Thanks to Biden's economy. She, she's tired of her son getting the shit stolen. I bet it was a prime drink. <laughs> I bet it was. Dude, these little kids are crazy over that shit, yeah, man. Be, yeah. Well, yeah. apparently not crazy enough because that little kid should have beat his ass. Uh, well. This is the mom here. Yeah, I think she did the right thing. I say free I think my, I think she was easy. I think that was easy. I say free, free, my, free, free my homie. Yeah, what's her name? I don't know. Okay. Um, something Rossi? Yeah, something. Uh, Jennifer. Free Jennifer. Yeah, free Jen Jen. Free Jennifer. Hashtag free Jennifer. Has, get it going. Like yeah. that shit up in the comments. Hashtag free It's the kind of parenting Jen we need. Yeah. I'm, I'm with it, man. I'm with it. Make so. America great again. <laughs> <laughs> Poison little kids. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, bro. It's lemon and salt and vinegar, dude. It's not. Come on. Yeah. You'll be all right. Look, man. I guarantee you that little kid you know what we used is to do? tasted and needing some nastier shit. You know what we used to do, bro? What? When I used to work in the bar scene. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't even say I know that. exactly what you're doing. Yeah. I, I used to do it, too. You fucking take pe- the fucking bar mats. That you going no, that way? We had a different trick. Oh. What'd you guys do? We took the bar mats. Yeah. You know, like that are on the bar, right? Uh-huh. The ones in the little rail part. Yeah. And at the end of the night, when we got too many drunk motherfuckers, we start handing out free shots. And we'll take that bar mat, pour it into a fucking cup. And so it's a mix of fucking everything. They think they're getting a shot. And bro, it's a free shot of that. Yeah. Who ain't a, they ain't turning free shit down. Here yeah. you go, man. Here you go. Yeah. That's nasty. Mm-hmm. Immediately puked. Yeah. That's what we did. Yeah, I hope I didn't incriminate myself too much. <laughs> what'd, you, what'd you do? I don't know if I can even say what I did. <laughs> Listen, man, everybody that's ever bartended before knows to bring a bottle of Visine to work. I'll leave oh, it at that. I've heard about this. Yeah, bro. You want to get rid of a f-ing asshole? Oh. You squirt a little Visine in their drink. They'll be gone in 10 minutes, bro. They will have to go home. Because <laughs> what's going to happen? Yeah, because they shit their pants. <laughs> yeah. That's fucked up. No, it ain't fucked up. <laughs> it ain't fucked up up because people are f-ing assholes to service bro yeah, you should real. never f- with someone who f- who prepares your food or drinks ever mm. you should always treat those people with respect yeah even always. if they're assholes even if they're f-ing having a bad day yeah that can give them some yeah. grace bro that's real that's dude i real we used to I, do we used to have so many f-ing assholes come in the bar and just treat us like shit <laughs> like just how many drops are needed like let's, how much per an ounce Coming how much bro talking. little bitty squirt oh, f- yeah just f- yeah I'm not saying I ever did it, but I've seen it done. I've seen it done. Yeah, right. That's like me going to X.com. That's right. Much, right. You're right. I'm Same seen, exact thing. I see what you're doing. Yeah. There. All right. Yeah. I, I'm not saying. I'm not saying I did it. I'm saying all the bartenders I knew had Visine all yeah. the time. Well, she definitely did it. Yeah. But uh, free from a girl. Free, yeah. Hashtag free. Uh, free. Free ginger. See, I'm a fan of like. I'm a fan of getting people back without mm-hmm. them ever realizing what happened. Mm, that's, that's like a, how I like to. Operate. It's a good feeling. Yeah, I like. That. I like them to think that it was me. No, I don't. I don't. I like them. I like that. I like for their shit to just happen and then wonder why these bad things are happening on the universe. Yeah, Trump. right. Yeah, I don't like be it. an asshole. <laughs> yeah. So what we got on this end? Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. thumbs up. Thumbs up. Good job, Mama. Yeah. Protect those little cubs. That's right. Yeah. Well, guys, Andy, that's all I got. All right, guys, don't be a hoe. Share the show.